rest in paperwork. So, I've been playing another roguelike, Metroidvania-esque roguelike. Well, not Super Metroid, a little Metroid, it's, it's, it's a roguelike. Have a nice death. So, gameplay-wise, I would say most similar to um, Dead Cells. Actually, fairly similar uh, mechanically and, and progression in a lot of ways. I think I like it a little bit better than Dead Cells. I think part of that is the look. I like the animation style. It's got really smooth 2D animation. Um, not to knock Dead Cells' pixelated look, but, you know, I just like the aesthetic a little bit better. And I kind of like the theming a little bit more than Dead Cells. So... Um, I mean, broadly speaking, it's a ro it's a 2D roguelike combat platformer. You know, Dead Cells, Rogue Legacy, you've played you you've probably played a lot of games like this. So I I there are small tweaks that make me like it a little bit more than again, I'll say Dead Cells, because it gives me I felt like a little bit more control over my starting setup and a little bit more control over my progression. It didn't feel quite as randomized as Dead Cells often did, at least at the time I played it. I don't know what's been patched or updated since, um, or DLC or what have you, but to my memory of Dead Cells. And, and I appreciate all that, personally. Um, it's not as uh, addictive as Rogue Legacy is. It doesn't really... Uh, hold a proper candle to that, but it's also not really doing the same thing. Like, it's a proper roguelike. You die, you go back to the beginning, um, which is only the case in Rogue Legacy if you play the specific rogue mode. Um, so I'm probably not going to sink anywhere near as many hours in this as I did into, say, Rogue Legacy, but I am I'm putting a bit of time into it. I'm enjoying what I'm unlocking. I enjoy uh, the different sort of abilities and the way you can alter your character build. Like if there's this one ability that you that you like, you stick in this slot, get another one here. Ooh, I've got this one. I don't normally like it as much, but this is a powered up version. So it might be worth it for the damage, even though it's not normally my favorite one. Oh, I guess I'll use that and and I'll sell this off and I'll get more resources and I'll buy better stuff and, and see how far I get in the run. I haven't beaten it at time of recording, but I've been playing it long enough that I don't think my uh, overall opinion is going to change. So, so I'm talking about it. Since mechanically, if you already know this genre, this is a very competent, meets expectations with flair kind of uh, experience of it. Um, and you should already know if that's your thing. So honestly, I think the thematics are what there's a lot more to actually talk about that isn't just pointing at something else. Uh, plot wise, this basically deals with the concept of death. You actually play the Grim Reaper in this buried in bureaucracy like death death used to be a very hands-on line of work but you know then there became so many people that you know you had to build a system to deal with all this you had to have employees paperwork procedures bureaucracy well the bureaucracy's gotten out of control and not only is death feeling incredibly down about the state of uh, the organization that he's supposedly at the top of, but also feels like he doesn't really control anymore. Um, but in addition to that, like, the, things just aren't quite working right. So you got to get in there, get to the various departments, deal with troublesome uh, employees and um, mid-bosses called Thanagers and boss uh, bosses called the Sorrows. And they're all uh, very themed in various ways. There's... Um, like there's entire sections based around um, physical health, mental health, addiction, um, bad food, you know, junk food, um, various sort of things that might be departments of a company that deals in death in some way, shape or form. And it's it's nicely done. And I also actually appreciate that. Like, so I know I mentioned the junk food thing. Your automatic assumption would be there's going to be some fat phobia in that. Um, not really, actually, um, because the things that you fight are the food. You fight embodiments of, uh, through that section of uh, milkshakes and uh, and a burger and whatnot. And the boss of that area is like a takeoff on the, on the big boy. Um, you know, the, the sort of cartoonish 
uh, sort of character that you'd see outside burger places uh, in some stores, or at least you used to. I don't know if any of those are still around. But in any case, like, the boss isn't a fat person, which would have been the very cheap way to go about it. Um, and so it's it's not demonizing any of these things. Same with the addiction one. It's not demonizing or the... You're, you're not fighting people who have addiction in that segment. You're fighting things that cause addiction. So um, I, I think the approach to that was fairly well done. That said, the game opens with the content warning. It is dark. It is dealing with darker stuff, things that are hazardous to health, concepts of death, concept, concepts of self-harm. And all of that is in play and it does have a content warning at the front end. And while it is all presented in a more cartoonish and not, it's dark material presented in not a particularly dark way, which some people can actually find almost harder to deal with that you're not giving it the proper weight, but that's a personal preference thing. For me, I felt like it balanced the inherent darkness of its material with uh, with some flair and a lot of visual energy. I, I thought those two things balanced quite well. And to me, at least, it never really felt like it um, was bogging things down with the way that it was presenting what it did. That having been said, ultimately, I said there was more to talk about the thematics. I think ultimately I am more engaged by the mechanics than the thematic. The thematics for me largely are the aesthetic. There is actual narrative and plot that goes on. There are various um, workers that you can encounter and run into and talk to enough and sort of unravels little stories about them, about the relationships that they have. So that all that's there. I have a tendency to skip through it. That having been said, apparently me, um, you know, talking to them because they had like an exclamation point over their head and blasting my way through their dialogue to get to the end as quickly as possible. Even that most people don't seem to do because I've gotten multiple achievements for completing storylines that are just prompting the characters to talk their bit. And like I said, I actually kind of skipped through a lot of it, but like I see a, an exclamation mark overhead that's hard for me to ignore. Apparently that's unique to me because in some of these cases, these were achievements that like only like 9% of players had gotten. I'm like less than 9% of people actually just blasted their way through the dialogue. Okay. But I'm, but setting that aside, the fact that I was kind of blasting through the dialogue shows that the actual, um, way that the quote-unquote narrative is presented didn't super engage me, even though the overall aesthetic and um, visual tone of the thing did. I like the paint job on this roguelike gameplay model that I otherwise enjoy. Is, is this like a top-tier roguelike? Would I recommend this uh, among the best of the best? No, uh, probably not. But if you enjoy this genre and you, I don't know, catch it on sale somewhere, or if you just um, are tired of the old standbys and you want a different one, this I think you'll probably end up having some fun with. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it a fair bit, and it, there's there's enough uh, incentive to, to try new things and stuff, uh, different like types of uh, scythes and whatnot that you can get. They, they shake up the gameplay uh, just enough to feel a little bit different, but not so drastic that it feels like if you didn't get your favorite one, you're screwed, which is how I would sometimes feel in uh, Dead Cells, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I just enjoyed this one. Weirdly dark as it is. Have a nice death. You played it, what'd you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. It's what enables me to do this as my living. Even if you can't be help. Even if you can't me help, even if you can't help me, I can't do the outros lately. Even if you can't help me out that way, links down in the description to other things you can follow. Don't worry too much about it. We take a relaxed attitude around here. So relaxed that I can't even remember words anymore. Just come on back next time you need a break. <laughs> Shout out to the patrons who helped make this possible. In particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfola, Goddess Elida, Tarak, the thing that goes doing to the anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Pranabilax the Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, and Rosalind Bennett. There's 
being able to hear me try and pronounce your name, plus a whole bunch of other rewards on the Patreon. You can check out the tiers, but um, if you're already on the list, thank you so much.